Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. Today is March 18th, 2021. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk cruiserweights. The big fight coming up in a few days. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, when it comes to placing bets, I'm old school, right? If I hear about certain odds and I know the fighter is world-class, high quality, has been in against some of the best, has held his own for years, and if you're giving me great odds, I'll take that bet without even fully knowing who that fighter is fighting. In other words, just like if you were in a sports book someplace and someone came up to you and said, hey, I'll give you Tyson Fury at a plus 200. Hey, <laughs> sign me up. You know, bottom line is I don't see the fighter out there who would warrant a plus 200 against the Tyson Fury. Well, here I heard that Christoph Glowacki was getting a plus 260. I thought, you got to be kidding me. They're giving away money here. Right? Then, of course, I researched his opponent, Lawrence Acoli. The bet I'm recommending here is to take a swing at the underdog. I like Christoph Glowacki at a plus 260 to upset Lawrence Okoli in the United Kingdom, Okoli's backyard. The fight is at Wembley. Let's talk about why. First, Glowacki. He's really the reason why I'm taking him in this fight. Right? Just understand, Glowacki is a guy who has fought some of the very best in recent years in the cruiserweight division. He beat Marco Huck. He beat Steve Cunningham. He went the distance with Alexander Usyk. He beat Vlasov. His losses are to Usyk and Maris Breedis. The Maris Breedis fight, in my opinion, was poorly refereed and descended into a foul fest. Let's talk about styles, because I think it's real important here. And understand, the knock on Glowacki is the knock on a lot of fighters in this pandemic era. He hasn't fought since 2019, right? So you're dealing with an older fighter who's been out of the ring. There might be a period in this fight where he's shaking off some rust. The other problem, too, with COVID is that you don't know how well the guys have kept themselves in shape. After all, they've been indoors. How well the guy has sparred. Understand, the sparring partners care about their health too. Right? Just because you want to spar doesn't mean that you're going to get your trainer out there during a pandemic helping you train. So there are a lot of questions here. But, my point is simply, this guy has fought the best at cruiser, right? Steve Cunningham famously knocked down Tyson Fury, who I talked about earlier, right? You want to see a tough fight that current heavyweight Alexander Povetkin had, go back and look at his fight against Marco Huck. Understand, Glowacki has beaten both of these guys, right? Both of them. He's a short puncher. So that means he wants to get inside on you, right? It also means he's not giving you, early at least, maybe later in the fight, but not early, a chance to counter him. He's not a long puncher who's swinging and missing and, uh-oh, he's open to get hit. No, this is a guy who's tight, right? He might keep his hands a little low, but he bends at the waist, so he's fighting small. His punches go about, let's say, two feet, right? He's a heavy puncher. 
He's a hunter. He's not a back foot guy. You're not going to see him suddenly try to dance his way to a win. That's not his game. He's there to fight you. He's there to hurt you. Not just box you. Right? Let me also say, too, that he doesn't have a lot of lateral movement. But I don't believe that's going to hurt him in this fight because Lawrence O'Coley doesn't have a lot of lateral movement. Also understand, when you fight an Alexander Usyk who's great with the lateral movement, both directions, you've seen it all. It's not like Gloacki, who went the distance with Usyk, is going to come in this fight, suddenly get hit with a lot of lateral movement, and freeze. Right? He's already been in with great movers. Now, in my opinion, he is vulnerable to reach. Right? He's a guy who, you know, because he's low, because he doesn't have a lot of what I call ring coverage, if you know what you're doing, right? If you're an Usyk, if you're a great jabber, a Larry Holmes, you might be able to hit him. Since you know he's a hunter, he's walking into the jab. You might be able to find him with your jab. You might be able to control him with your jab. Let me also say, too, he holds his own against Usyk early, in my opinion. I know the judges had Usyk by a wide margin. I didn't. I thought that was a competitive fight. I've put the highlights in my favorites folder here on YouTube. He tired against Usyk. You'll notice in the later rounds, Usyk starts putting in work. Combinations up top to Gloacki. Right? But Gloacki's a southpaw. Usyk was fighting southpaw in that fight. Usyk's also fluid. Recognize elite talent. Lawrence Okole is not. Now let's talk about Okole because I, I can't explain these odds. Right? If, if you're getting the kind of odds that Lawrence Okole is, I mean... You better be Maris Breedis on his best day. You better be Usyk when he was making cruiserweight on his best day. I don't believe Okoli deserves these odds. And I know he's the favorite, so I know I might be a voice here in the wilderness. I see three big punches with Okoli. Straight right, left hook, jab to the body. Now, the jab to the body is important because Akoli is 6'5", right? He can hit you to the body with a jab from halfway across the ring. He has ring coverage. That jab might enable him. If you don't try to knock down the jab, get inside of the jab, get close to him, might enable Akoli to win some of the slower rounds. But here's the big problem I have with him. When you're a taller fighter, in my opinion, you have to know how to use height. Right? One of my favorite fighters in history is Vitaly Klitschko. Klitschko was a tall guy with a lot of power. Look at the KO percentage. A lot of power. But yet, he knew how to lean back. Even when he was fighting a very high volume opponent like a Chris Ariola, you notice that Vitaly Klitschko could operate offensively, leaning back. He had it so that he could hit you. Then as you tried to counter him, he could lean and the punch would swing by him. Right? Think Ali, who was a taller fighter for the 1960s. He would hit you, then he would lean. A lot of Ali's game was the lean. A lot of Vitaly Klitschko's game was the lean. The smaller man felt smaller, had to get desperate because these guys could keep you outside. Right? Vitaly also had a way where he'd be able to block punches with his forearms and then counter you, batter you, overwhelm you.
Then, of course, in the slow rounds, Vitaly could just pump a jab in your face. Look at Vitaly's fight against Sam Peter. Now, I look at Lawrence Okole. Let me ask a serious question here. What's this brother thinking? You're 6'5 at Cruiser. You're in your late 20s. I believe Okole's 28 years old. Haven't you talked to people older than you? Don't you realize that your metabolism eventually is going to slow down? Don't you realize that at 6'5", you're lucky to be able to make cruiser weight? Sooner or later, you're going to be a heavyweight. Now, if you're a heavyweight and you're 6'5", player, you better know how to fight leaning back. Guys are there trying to take your head off. You've got to use every advantage that you have. One of them should be your height, your reach. Spacing. Shouldn't it? This is the 6'5 guy who loses four inches in the ring because he's leaning forward. Think about that. So here I have Glowacki, who I think is much better than Okoli inside. And yes, inside matters. Here I have Glowacki fighting a taller fighter. I know you look at... Uh, photos of the two guys. One guy's taller than the other guy. And I know, I just know, that Glowacki is going to get inside. I just know it. I know he's going to start throwing big punches inside. And Okoli might not know what to do. Let me just say too, it's simple math. If you're 6'5 and you're weighing 200 pounds, there's not a lot of meat on the bone. How many body shots can Okoli take? There's no body fat to cushion the blow. This guy is skin and bones. So, don't get me wrong. He hits hard with the straight right. Very hard. And if you're a cynic, you might say, how do you tame a southpaw? with straight right hands, right? Okoli hits hard with the straight right. He hits hard with the left hook. He has punching power. There's no question about it. But he's not a strong man. If this turns into a wrestling match, if Glowacki gets inside, keeps his hands going, refuses to get clinched, and you need Okoli to muscle with him, to hold on to him, right? To grab him closer to him, to smother his punches. I don't think this guy has the strength to do that. Let me say too, it's a shame that I mentioned Ali in talking about this video. You had to deal with Ali's movement, didn't you? You had to deal with his legs. Here you have a tall guy who doesn't have movement. Okoli is not gifted in terms of fluidity to me. I know I'm sounding hard. This is not a fan club site. Right? This is the tall guy who is tall and gangly. Not super coordinated. You get inside, things get messy. But what's not going to happen is this guy's not going to be able to hit you with hard shots backing up. Right? That's just not part of his game. Nor do you have to worry about this guy moving. Right? Not blessed in terms of lateral movement. No, his game is to use his reach. He's bent over. He sticks his hand out to make sure you're too far away to hit him. That's the problem, too. Whereas Larry Holmes measured distance by pummeling you with the jab. In other words, you go out there in the first round, you say, let me see what Larry Holmes has. Then you're just getting hit and bludgeoned with this jab. Then, of course, your eye starts puffing up. You start seeing two of Larry. Then Larry closes you out. Right? This guy doesn't have the confidence. Only has 15 pro fights, guys. I don't care what the hype is. And the 15 pro fights are not against Marco Huck, Steve Cunningham, Maris Breedis, Maxim Vlasov, 
Alexander Usyk. No, no. That level of competition is far in front of this guy. Right? And so this guy has the confidence to throw a jab at your body. That's a big enough target. But he doesn't have the confidence. And he's 28. He doesn't have the confidence to come in with reach and a jab and take out your head. Right? This isn't the great jabber. This isn't the guy who says, look, the fight doesn't start until you get by my jab. You know, look, if you allow me to hit you in the face with the jab, I'm going to win round after round until you come up with another idea. This is not that guy. His fights descend into shootouts. Let's also talk about a fight that shocks me. In my favorites folder here, and this might be unfair because this is when O'Coley was an amateur. But there's a fight against uh, between him and Arislandi Savon, the bronze medal winner from the Rio Olympics. Right? World-class amateur fighter out of Cuba. And I'm not kidding. Ten seconds into the fight. I'm talking about the first ten seconds into the fight. Savon comes out and throws a straight left hand that hits Okoli flush. Right? Okoli comes out, doesn't have a hand up. Gets hit flush with the shot. It's outclassed the entire fight. Savon's really relying on two punches. That straight right hand, Savon has ring coverage. More ring coverage than Glowacki, I'll concede that. But it's a straight right hand and it's a left hook. And let's just say you look at Okoli and he just didn't have enough to counter it. He gets stopped in the first round. Now the reason it's important is fighters pick up new skills. They improve like the rest of us. I'm sure you're better at your job today than you were, let's say, four or five years ago. Right? We all start out a little bit clueless. But I've noticed with fighters, you either have that Marvin Hagler chin or you don't. Right? You either have the kind of chin where you're 100% at the beginning of the fight you should be awfully close to 100% 10 seconds into the fight. And if you get hit with something, you should be able to take that shot. I know O'Coley is unbeaten. I know he's never been knocked out. But let's just say I have concerns based on the Arislandi Savon fight. Right? The concerns are multi layered. Number one, when I see a guy get hit and that day is 10 seconds into a fight, I'm wondering about the guy's chin. Number two, okay, you've been hurt and you have more than two and a half minutes left in the round. You can tell even when a fighter's hurt whether that fighter is savvy. Right? You'll notice savvy guys doing things like moving, <laughs> clinching. Right? Throwing jabs. Moving away. Staying away from the corner. Right? You don't want to be pinned on the ropes. So, a lot of fighters get stunned in the sport. And you'll say, okay, this guy, you know, this guy got stunned. Okay. I'll, I've even seen savvy fighters get stunned and then say, okay, I'm going to take a knee here. That'll give me a few seconds to clear my head. That'll force the ref to send this guy to a neutral corner. I've lost the round. Okay, fine. I still have a chance to win the fight, especially when it's the first round, like the Savon fight. I didn't see in that three-minute round anything that gave me the feeling that Lawrence Ocoli was savvy. I get the feeling this might be that unbeaten fighter, that new car before its first accident. Right? I get the feeling he's in with a tough vet 
who's been in some rough and tumble fights against hand speed guys, Steve Cunningham, Movers, Arislandi Lara, rough, strong guys, Maris Breedis. Right? Glowacki has seen it all. He hasn't been protected. He's only lost to the very best. I know he's savvy. So, if you're going to tell me that I'm getting a plus 260, these are the kind of long odds I would expect if Glowacki's fighting Maris Breedis or Usyk, right? You mean I'm getting a plus 260 on Christoph Glowacki, and he's fighting a 15-0, 6-5 guy who bends over into the pocket? Who can't control you from distance with a jab? No need to put a bow on the package. I'm going to fly naked on this one. I'm not even going to hedge the play. It's dangerous. I'm not going to bet a lot. This is recreational, right? It's dangerous. But I'm going to take the plus 260 underdog. I know he's a rough and tumble fighter. This is one of those bets that make themselves. Right? You're somewhere and they come up to you and they say, hey, I'll give you a plus 200 on Terrence Crawford before they finish the sentence. I don't care if it is Errol Spence. Before they finish the sentence, you're going to say plus 260. You know, it could be Mikey Garcia. You know, the opponent. They say, hey, I'm giving you better than plus 200 on Terrence Crawford. Sign me up. You know, the only question is, hey, is it in the weight class? I don't want to get great odds and here he's fighting Tyson Fury. Right? If it's in the weight class, sign me up. This is that fight. Plus 260. I'm not even getting a plus 200. It's a plus 260. On Christoph Glowacki. Against a tall guy who can't use his height and who can't dominate behind a head jab. I'll take my chances. Right? Let me also say this too, and it needs to be said. Just matching up styles. Savan, Erislandi Savan, hits him with a straight right hand. Glowacki, of course, is a southpaw. So he's not going to be hitting him with the same straight right hand that Arislandi Savan hit Okoli with. Just be aware of that. But let me just say, I know Glowacki's going to be hitting him with a hell of a lot of punches inside. He's going to slip inside because he's savvy like that. As I said, this is a guy who can bend at the waist. He's not standing there saying, hit me, please. Right? He's going to bend at the waist, Sterling. I'm sure he knows more about the Aristotle Savon fights. I believe Savon beat this guy multiple times as an amateur. Right? I'm sure he understands that this 15 and 0 guy has an untested chin. And understand, too, Glowacki is the kind of guy who's fought on the road before. Even though he'll be fighting in Okoli's backyard, I don't think he plans on allowing this fight to go the distance. I don't think he's going to expose himself to the judges here. I like the challenger. I like the underdog. I like the plus 260 underdog, Christoph Glowacki. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.